Oh, I'm going to just... Shh. Shh. <laughs> Cash box is it? <laughs> Excellent. Cool. Alright. So, you guys are here for the Arduino workshop. A couple of people down there. They are? They are, yep. That's about it at the moment, at least until... I know a lot of the N1000 kids are probably busy. Yeah. Busy with testing. Yeah. Well, um, yeah. Alright, well, I'm going to have to go up this, uh, <laughs> this after this. Alright, cool. Anyway, I'll get started now. What lecture you got on at the moment? Oh, oh, yeah, my, my lecture just finished. So. Oh, okay, cool. Great All right, nice. but you you're, gonna got, you're not going <laughs> to... Really? Oh, well. Okay, see ya. All right. Uh, hey, everyone. Uh, for those of you who aren't here for the Arduino workshop, uh, as usual, you guys can stay where you are. It's all good. For those that are, I see a few of you around there. That's cool as well. Uh, we'll just be talking for the next hour and a half until 2 p.m. This is a workshop that we run uh, in this location every fortnight. So if you guys are going to be disturbed, um, we do have this room booked, but if you're going to be disturbed, hopefully the lab next door has some a few computers spare or you might want to move. Uh, if you don't care, you can stay where you are. All right, cool. So um, for those... Uh, People who are part of Create or interested in what we do, a few announcements. Uh, for those who got the quadcopter kits, uh, they're coming in very, very shortly. Uh, we're expecting them to be ready to give to you guys in week 11. That's obviously not an ideal time uh, to put them together because you're all preparing for exams. So uh, we do want to run uh, workshops uh, to put the quadcopters together after exams have finished. So during the holidays and also the beginning of semester one. Uh, those quadcopters, uh, we're going to be doing something slightly different than we did last year because they have a lot more features now that we're getting uh, the, more, the official flight boards. Uh, so we'll, we'll be working on that. Hopefully there won't be too many hiccups. It should be easier to put together than the other ones. Uh, uh, these workshops, uh, we got this week, uh, then it was week 9 this week? Yeah. Yeah. So we got week 9, week 10, week 11, week 12. So... What we'll be covering in the next few weeks is we'll be looking increasingly at sort of the more advanced hardware. So we might get a chance, for example, to have a look at some GPS stuff. Uh, we'll have a chance to look at using accelerometers and gyros, LCD modules. Uh, we've already done Bluetooth, so we won't cover Bluetooth. Um, but yeah, sort of getting into the more interesting side. We'll also be going through some of the more advanced features of Arduino, such as uh, internal and external interrupts. Hopefully I might touch external interrupts today uh, and a few of the other sensors that are in your kits. Um, today we'll be looking at Hall Effect sensors, uh, the seven segment LED displays that you have in your kits, uh, as well as the temperature sensors that you're in your kits, how to use those. Also, uh, for those interested in our ground vehicle and aerial vehicle teams, uh, we're still trying to get those off the ground at the moment, uh, but we've got a lot of interest and a lot of plans. Uh, look out for announcements on our Create group about that. You, it's you know uh, still free to join, even if you haven't heard about it before. Uh, teams open to anyone. Uh, and hopefully we'll be having our end of semester social sometime in week 12 or 13. And also we have our sale today, uh, 10 until 4 p.m. on the Globe Lawn. All right, so... I've got the recording on uh, our YouTube channel of last week's workshop. Haven't got the link for it in these slides, but we do have, uh, I think those are old Google links. The, the, the links that you want for this workshop are at the, at the, at the top of the uh, slide there. Um, that's the link. Hopefully you can find it in our Google Drive if you've come to a few of these anyway already. Okay. So the first thing that we're going to look at is uh, the seven-segment display and uh, basic principles of using a seven-segment display. So what a seven-segment display is uh, and why it's called a seven-segment display is that you might have seen these on alarm clocks or digital watches or things like that. Each number, if you count to make like any combination of numbers one through to nine, including zero, 
uh, you need seven segments. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And then you have an eighth segment, which is the decimal place. So these are essentially just LEDs embedded uh, inside this module uh, that allows you to, you know, light it up and control and display numbers. Now, the trick with this is that if you think about how many different segments are in a four-digit seven-segment display, that is, you know, seven times four or eight times four, if you want to include the decimal point, that's 32 things that you need to control. Now, you might think, hang on, how do I do that, for example, with an Arduino Uno, because it's only got 13 uh, digital output pins. Uh, the trick is is uh, what we call a principle of multiplexing, is that embedded in these seven segment LED displays uh, is that we have the ability to cycle through all four digits very quickly and essentially give the illusion that like we're controlling all of them simultaneously when in fact we are displaying a number on one digit, moving to the next digit, displaying the next digit, moving to the next, displaying the next. So it means that really uh, we only need uh, essentially the pins that you see uh, here. There should be two rows of them. So it means that the amount of pins that we need is re can be reduced to 12 uh, to control all of these things, which is really good. You can also get an IC, which converts uh, you know, a 4-bit number straight to a 4-digit uh, seven segment display uh, which is really useful as well but we don't have those in kits um, but they're quite easy to use and they can save you a lot of pins but today we'll be just wiring it up directly to the Arduino so before we get into using things like temperature sensors and Hall effect sensors we're first going to try and see if we can display some numbers uh, on our seven segment display now what this is going to mean is you guys are going to need a few uh, resistors uh, but fortunately not too many. We have most of the circuit diagrams in here. So I'll talk about this. So as with the uh, as with our RGB LED, it's a similar principle to an RGB LED. You have what we call a common uh, or is this common cathode? Common anode, common cathode. Hopefully, I think this is common common cathode no it's definitely definitely common anode uh, so what we have here is an uh, what a circuit diagram for our seven segment LED display looks like so you have uh, segments that are as you'll see standardized uh, numbered a through to F so you can see in our slides on the bottom there is what segment a B C D E F and then GR so a starts at the top it goes in a clockwise direction and then finally ends with the middle segment. And then you have the extras for the decimal places. So in terms of what all these numbers mean, like 12, 9, 8, 6, and all those numbers down there, those are the corresponding pins of our seven-segment display. Now, how on earth, what, where are those pins? Well, if we look at this picture here, uh, you can see that uh, we've got them start at the bottom left, go from 1 to 6, and then go up to 7, and then go across to 12, which is the standard way that IC pins or any module pins are labelled. Now, on this diagram, we have a really sort of handy way to save you time and link pins to an Arduino uh, so that you can display uh, it properly in an orderly fashion. So... It, what we have here are the LED sort of display pin numbers, and then we have the Arduino pins corresponding that you should link those seven segments to. So that diagram is going to be really useful. I suggest you have that on your screen for a while and see if you can follow and wire that up. As I said, the way that it works is that we can only control one digit at a time, and hence, by cycling through the digits fast enough, your eye can't detect each digit turning on and off. And hence, all the digits appear. So, we have in our Google Drive uh, an example uh, program for you. 
uh, to save you a lot of time programming today because if you had to program, you know, turn numbers into segments, it's going to take, you know, a couple of dozen lines of code. It's going to be really annoying. Uh, so we have in our Google Drive, and just in case you're not sure where our Google Drive is, I'll pull it up now. Uh, in Workshop 6 folder, which is, again, where all our slides are, um, we have these .ino files, which are your Arduino files. So you can actually uh, use, I'd suggest start off with LED display timer.ino, download it, open it up, have a look at what it code is contained, and use that to start. Um, that should, hopefully it's shared. Um, let me just check it's all good to go. Anyone can view and hopefully download. Let me know if you guys have trouble downloading that, but all of that is there. I'd suggest you can write your own code, but it'll save you a lot of time to use that code. Uh, if there's any problems with it, um, it's probably because I wrote it. I wrote it last year when we did seven segment displays. Uh, it should work though, and it should um, be coherent enough for you to understand it. If it's just simple digital turning on and off. So that code is based on you wiring up the seven segment display exactly in that, as in that diagram. So what it does is it, that code is just a timer. It essentially is a stopwatch. So it should count up. And I'm not sure if it includes decimal place or tenths of a second. I've got to look at the code. But we're just going to take a bit of a break now so that you guys have time to wire this up. So what this you need is you do need a bunch, a couple of resistors. Now, these are the same resistors that you had in your kits to control LEDs. So hopefully you've kept them. I don't think we have too many spares. Again, why... How, how, what is the purpose of these resistors? Uh, we've wired four resistors up, one for each digit. So that is the minimum amount of resistors that you need so that you don't blow anything up. So where those resistors are located, just to make sure it's very, very important what you do, you have your seven segments across the uh, breadboard. Make sure that it's straddling each side of the breadboard so you don't have any short circuits. Where those resistors are located are on Arduino pins 2, 3, 4, and 5, which are each of the corresponding digits of your 7-segment display. So hopefully that makes sense. I'm just going to leave that up there for now. And... What we will hopefully do now is just check that you guys can get your seven segment displays working uh, just by wiring it up with resistors with sample code. Again, if you don't have, if you have any resistors will work, you don't need necessarily the right value. You might see a seven segment display be a bit dimmer, but that's okay. If you guys have any questions about any other topics or are working on something from last week, that's cool. Also, you can keep working on that. Uh, we have our last week's workshop slides. Um, but yeah, hopefully this won't take too long to get working today. Like, I think that would be worth it. 
worthwhile because we have the money, but we certainly don't want to more. Yeah, we don't want to get buy chassis of those cars because we're trying to mod it for something because it's just a waste of money. We don't have money to waste. We have money to spend on cars, but so. Otherwise, two wheel drive. So like that, that two wheel drive will get two hundred fifty dollars. That was that's like two wheel drive. They've not removed other wheels. Well, no. That one. Do any of the two wheels have Arduino on them? Yeah. Yeah, this one is Arduino. Yeah. Did you spell it right? A R D U. Did you spell it right? <laughs> They've all been installed. No, because like the other belt down the list. Um, do we have any? Do we have any spare resistors so I can wire? It? Um, spare resistors. Put up your hand if you have any problems or concerns. We'll try and sort them out. Also, just be careful. So, that wiring diagram, we've spread out the wires, but the pins aren't actually spread out on the seven segment display. Just be aware of that. When there's a gap between the wires here, I've just noticed there is really no gap in the seven segment display. Whilst everything's in the correct order, just make sure that you look under it yourself. Probably better just to follow that diagram. And remember it goes from bottom left around anti-clockwise to top left in turn.
to? Does your hello program purposely have a space in it? Probably. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> It comes at H E L space L O. Oh, does it? That's yeah. no. It, 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 I mean, it might be a bug in the program. Yeah. No, it looks like you see a when you've got some work done. Yeah, that, that's, that's, that's not the pro. Oh, so, for me, it's pretty easy. So, so just check the wiring and. Like a month to do it. At least. Yes. Okay. Yeah, but you can sit so down as if there's a computer free. Yeah. Eight. Yeah. Thirteen, nine, ten. Well, I'm glad someone got it mostly working. <laughs> it lead means that the program's okay. This is exciting. Please work.
just go on the power comes for one second. Just so we can get the link. It's lagging pretty bad, hold on. That's all good, you can go back to it. Alright. What the fuck is this? It's meant to be like a top of the line machine. This is, I think it's the screen recording that is just using way too much RAM. Alright, let's see if this works. Cool. Oi. Check. <laughs> Check this out. Nice. That took so long to program properly. <laughs> I tried using that with the ultrasonic. Oh, yeah. Just to display the number. Yeah. It took so long to do. Yeah. No, it's I hate L I hate seven segments. <laughs> Just so you, if you if you get the proper driver, the I got chip. The, I got the decoder. I, yeah, I get yeah. the decoder from thirty two hundred. Yeah. And use that. Yeah, that would make it so much easier. Anyway, at least I know it works. Yeah. This thing. All right. Um, yeah. Code. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay, no. Hold on. I know what's wrong with this circuit. My time is still counting up. Yep. <laughs> That's a lot of pins <laughs> just for it's, that. It is a lot of pins. If you get the driver, yeah, yeah. you reduce that number of pins to right. like four or six. But, but even that's a bit. <laughs> but it, for it's, you know, it's 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 good just to understand how yeah. it works. Like if you look into the Arduino code. Yeah. Even me, like when I did motors, I started doing two massive relays. Did it all like that. No motor controller. <laughs> Oops. I actually found out it's better than any motor controller. It's not what I need. File. Preferences. Alright. It doesn't look like 24. Oh, it's. 
36. I'm going to explain how this program works to people uh, so that you can get an understanding of like what's going on. I just tested it on my seven segment display and it works fine. So if, if it's not quite working the way it wants to, check your circuit. It's a little bit, you know, cumbersome with all the wires everywhere. If you need help, put up your hand um, and we'll try and sort you out. Um, Roshan, I think someone over there needs a hand. So the first thing that I do uh, in this program is I set up what is called uh, an, an array. And this is a two-dimensional array. So for those of you who've done C programming, you might be familiar with this. For those who haven't, I can set up a uh, variable which contains like rows and columns of numbers. And the way that I've done it, I've made each row the definition of a digit from 0 through to 9. So the way this, this corresponds is that the segments go from left to right, A, B, C, D, E, F, like that. So A, B, C, D, E, F, and G, sorry. So that's your seven segments there, and that defines the number. So for example, for num for to create the number zero, you need to have segments A, B, C, D, E, and F on, and G off. So that's what I've done there. Likewise to every single other number up to there. So then... The next thing we do is we define segments A through to G, uh, which, as corresponding to the way that we've made it so that you've wired it up, is just 6 through to 13. And then the digit pins are 2 through to 5. So we do need to set up some variables there to make it much easier for us so that our program is shorter. Now, the rest of this, what does it do? Well, firstly, it has to pin mode all the pins to output. So it does a couple of for loops to pin up, uh, output, make everything output. And then for your uh, other digit pins, because it is, a, it, it is uh, the direction of the pins to turn them on, you set the pins to low, it digital writes all the digits to high, so it turns them off. And that's the default state, is turning them off. Now, for this timer to work, we need to keep track of time. Now, the way that you keep track of time is by first initializing uh, the time of the Arduino using the millisecond function. So we've got a long, which is just like a large integer, is equal to the t current time of the Arduino in milliseconds. Now, we've got some complex sort of uh, more complex calculations to get this timer to work with the decimal point much easier if you don't have the decimal point um, but what it does is that it has to first turn on a particular digit and the way that this for loop works is that it has to cycle through four digits so we're going from j equals zero to j is less than four which will allow us to control four digits and it increments j each time now, to work out what value to display to each segment, I can't just go print the number like before because I have to manually tell each segment what number it should display. Now, when you have the IC driver, this is much easier, but without the, the extra hardware, you need to calculate what each digit needs to display. Now, to do this, we get our number that we have. Say we've worked out that maybe you know, like 60 seconds or 65 seconds has passed. We need to first work out what the lowest digit is. Or do we work out what the highest digit is? No, we work out what the highest digit is first. So to work out what the largest digit is, we divide that number by a, th by a thousand. Which is why we start off with k is a thousand because with this decimal point, dividing by a thousand will give us what the very first number should be. So we divide that number by a thousand and then have a mod ten to turn it into an integer. So we digital write 
the corresponding digit to low from starting from left to right. We work out what our number is, which is our current time. We divide that by a thousand, and then we do a, uh, and then we display the tenth decimal point if we've got up to that stage. Otherwise, we do a loop where or where we digital write all its segments uh, that we need to low. which is embedded in the function uh, number x divided by k mod 10. So that function, number x divided by k mod 10, is something that, that I wrote down here, and you can see what it does, is that it just loops through all the segments and writes the segment, corresponding segment, with the number. Uh, that or we're turning it on and off as needed, which is why all those arrays up there were so important. So this program is really dense, uh, con compact, and you'll see a lot of like seven segment codes out there. And this is, I think, the shortest way that I've seen it done. So we've got. If you spend some time analyzing that in terms of how it goes through each digit and then displays each thing, then then turns it off, moves on, turns it on, displays. That's what the program does. In terms of how to use this program to display something other than time, we have an example on how to use our temperature sensor. Uh, so, yeah, we'll give some more time for you to wire up your seven segment displays. I'm not checking my I'm not checking my
Let me explain. Okay, so the first thing that you should do, and this is the most complicated part, if you want to get, if your display is displaying jargon, which looks like lots of people's, uh, is you first turn up for you void number, turn it into a not numbers like that so just put a not symbol around it like that so that's the first change that needs to be made to the program is that you just put a not and that's going to make it do the opposite and then the second change that you make is make every lower high and every high a low so and then you should get hopefully a successful program so I'm going to try and save this now so that you guys don't have to do that so we can download it uh, as well. Um. I already, yeah, I've already found out. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, okay. I'm going to now upload this. And I'm going to call it LED Display Timer 2. And this is going in the Google Drive. Sorry about that. Alright, so hopefully that LED Display Timer 2 program is now able to be downloaded uh, on the Google Drive if it uploads in a sec. Let me check. Yep, there it is. Although, why is it a folder? Okay, whatever. Yep, just go into the folder and download LED Display Timer 2 and tell me if that fixes the problem. All right. Can someone confirm to me where, whether that works? It's working now? Did it change? Yeah, cool. Alright. Okay. So, given that that's backwards, it means that all the other programs for people who are backwards are going to be backwards as well. So, I'm going to tell you how to use this program instead that we've currently changed to make it display what you want. So, I'm going to go back and open... Just LED display timer. Alright, so 
We're going to talk about temperature sensors now. So the temperature sensors in your kit. What do they look like? They look like this. So they either have they, they should have TMP thirty seven written on it. Again, let us know if you don't have the required part. So the temperature sensor uh, looks like something like that. It is a powered sensor, as most of these active sensors are. So we what you need is you need five volts uh, in. And then ground out. On the, so on the le on the left you have five volts. On the right you have ground. Just make sure those numbers are facing towards you on the diagram. And then the middle pin goes straight to analog and analog input. No resistors are required. Uh, it should be able to calibrate this perfectly. Now it's not the TMP thirty six. It's the temperature TMP thirty seven. Uh, so what we're going to do uh, is I just want I think. We should ignore the program for the uh, what it's given here for now, and we're going to go back into our seven-segment LED display code and get a temperature being displayed. So, just power off five volts, power, and then find a ground, and then connect it to analog input zero or some other analog input if you really want to. All right. So to display our temperature, we don't need to do anything extra with numbers because we've already done all of that. Um, we just need to do the analog read. Um, if they're not in the junk box, um, then you can borrow, take one out of a kit. Many people need it. All right. Anyway, so in leave everything else other than what's inside the loop. So I'm just going to comment out this for now. Like that. You can delete everything inside the loop if you want. Now all I'm going to do... Is I'm gonna have I'm gonna make a, a float data so why float it's gonna be uh, it's accurate to decimal points so we don't want an integer here we want a float which is a, a, in, a variable with decimal places and what we're gonna do is the conversion from temp voltage the temperature hap for this particular sensor that you have happens to be very, very convenient. The way it works is that we're just doing uh, data equals analog read zero, and then we're going to divide that analog read zero by four. Now, funnily enough, that gives us the temperature that we need. So. The, or a problem with this is that analog read zero actually returns an integer. So if this doesn't work, we need to do analog data equals analog read zero, and then we go data equals data divided by four. Something along those lines. I think that that should make it work properly. If that doesn't work, again then we might have an integer which is like a temporary variable and then we can have that temporary variable equal to analog read zero and then we can go that data equals the temp temporary reading divided by four either way hopefully one of those will work the key thing is is then how do we display it display the number well We've got to use some of this code, actually. I probably... I'm sorry if you've just deleted. Hopefully you haven't saved. Uh, otherwise, you might need to upload the program. Um, yeah. 
yeah, actually, you do need all the code uh, that was in the timing program. The only difference being is that before what we were writing was we we're writing the number x, right? So down the bottom, if you make x a uh, Nah. How do we do this best? How does my how do, how does the other Arduino program actually do it? Um, I'm just gonna open up the INO file. See if this is handy. If you make the changes as before to the temper the thermometer INO file, hopefully it should give us enough information. Yep, all right, so it's still got all of the other stuff plus so it has that, except it has, right, okay. So that means that all the other stuff is the same, except down the bottom, instead of X is just being incremented, they made, we made it equal to analog read zero, We've times it by 100 and divided it by 4. Okay, so that should work. An X is a float. Okay, so the key changes being, I'm just going to go back to the timer program, is that we're making... Where we've got int X, we're going to do float X. So change int x into float x. I'm fairly confident that we can actually get rid of the rest of this information here, funnily enough. Won't need it. Um, and down the bottom we do what was in the sample code, which is that we make... x equal to analog read 0, and then we times it by 100, and then divide it by 4. Okay. Now, the order of the operations is important uh, in terms of rounding errors. You don't want to divide by 4 and then times by 100. You, you'd rather times by 100 then divide by 4. Now what that sort of operation means, when you see the times before the equals, that's equivalent to x equals x times 100, and this is equivalent to x equals x divided by 4. So hopefully, what I'm also going to add so that I can check that my temperature is actually, sensor is working properly, is I'm going to add in my setup, I'm going to add a serial dot begin. And then at the end of all of this, I'm going to serial print the value of, uh, on a new line, the value of x like that. And that means I can see what the temperature is reading. So, have a temperature sensor. Yes, we do. Is there any, there's no temperature sensor in there, is there? Oh, you found two? Yes. They're not temperature sensors. Unless they're transistors. Be careful. Yeah, um, TMP. TMP, yeah. Yeah, that's fine. Though. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. I found two of those. Okay, cool. Tell me if you find a third. <laughs> okay, I'm just using one for this Arduino kit. Alright. Let me wire this up. So hopefully that program should upload, and it should work, and we should get some temperature being displayed. See if that works. Ah. Okay. 
So, there, <laughs> my code's not compiling. Why? There's a few other things that need to be done to the code, and that is this. Um, so, the problem is you can't do a mod modular arithmetic operation with a float, so we add a couple of extra lines here. So we replace... Let's just see if it, if, if it otherwise translates the same. Okay. All right. So <laughs> there's a few changes. Uh, we want our decimal point appearing at digit number 2, not digit number 1. So we write J equals equals 1 here. Shit. Uh, <laughs> um, I'll pick that up in a sec. So J equals equals 1, and then we copy and paste a couple of lines from here. So temperature X, temp equals X divided by K, and then number equals temp mod 10. So that means that we did need an... Like that. And then... Is that, is that it? I think so. So that means that you have to have an integer variable temp at the beginning, which we've already got here. Okay. I'll upload this to the Google Drive if it works so you guys can use it. All right, success, yep. So the reason that we need to move the decimal point along is that it actually reads to two decimal places. And my temperature sensor is working, cool. So just to show you guys what output I'm getting at the moment. Okay, so what, this, what the number is, is that it's printing out all four digits. So the decimal point is different when we write it to the display, it's shifted. So you can divide, you, that number should be divided by 100. But you can essentially see that it's reading 24.75 degrees at the moment. If I put my fingers on the temperature sensor, we should see that number rise pretty rapidly. So, yeah, 29 degrees, 30 degrees. Does anyone know what human body temperature should be roughly? 37. About 37? All right, well... We'll see if my fingers are warm enough to get that up to 37. Maybe not at the moment. It's up to 31. It's a pretty cold day. It's a pretty cold day. My fingers are probably not at 37 degrees. Anyway. I'll let go of that now, bring it back down. Okay. So, I'll upload that file, just in case you guys had trouble following along. I'll also add that we're printing X divided by 100, like that. So LED display thermometer 2 is going to be the name of the file. Alright, that's uploaded now. Sure. It's not going to screw up. It's going to do what the code it's, says. Is it the numbers will screw up? I just the code. I don't think it will screw up. I think. Well, maybe the. Because uh, because what? Oh. Yeah. What will happen is that it divides like the like and the integer won't overflow. Like the variable is not going to overflow. And the way it calculates it, dividing by a thousand and modding ten. So even if you go over a thousand, it should still display the correct numbers. It will just display oh, zeros okay. instead of like you won't you won't see the like the you can program it so that when it's over a number, you can use like an overflow indicator or restart or yeah. something like that yeah. um, quite easily. Yeah. All right, so that should have hopefully been uploaded. We may not get around to exactly what we wanted to do today. Well, not everything. 
because this has taken a little while. I think the last thing I'm going to teach you guys today is a very, very simple vibration sensor. I don't want to use it as a buzzer at the moment because we're just going to annoy the hell out of people in the room. Uh, so, how to use a piezoelectric element as a vibration sensor. This is like the easiest thing that you'll be doing today. Uh, I'll, I haven't got an image of what a piezoelectric element looks like, but I have one in my hand. Um, so, this is what a piezoelectric element looks like. It's a little buzzer looking thing. You'll see them on circuits everywhere. So it can be used as a buzzer. Basically what it is, it's very simple, just sort of like magnet and coil. Or if not a magnet, then it just uses like magnetic field from the coil to vibrate uh, a little element inside. Uh, likewise, uh, vibrations conversely generate voltages. Now, the voltages generated by something like this are... Uh, without any amplification are very, very small. However, it is just enough to be able to be detected by our Arduino analog inputs. So you'll be expecting to uh, be generating about 0 0.05 volts at maximum. By hitting one of these, you might get to a bit higher. So we have the ability to use this as a vibration sensor as a result. So the way that the circuit works is that you need to put it in parallel with a decent sized resistor. I'd suggest you can do that by using a potentiometer. It's probably the best way. And then wire it between ground and any analog input. So I'm just going to show you what the output of this will look like as a result of doing exactly that just so that you can understand what we're dealing with. I think, fortunately, because of the spacing of the pins, uh, you can simply put the potentiometer without any extra wires uh, directly in line with the buzzer and presuming that... Put, put it roughly halfway to start with so that you don't have a short circuit across there. It won't damage anything, but... You just don't want, you won't be able to read anything, otherwise. Uh, straighten this pin. Is there enough room? Yes, sir. There's not really enough room. But we can try anyway. Alright. Can I squeeze two wires in there? Ah, oh, yeah, yes. Take a photo with the arc sign and preferably you can see where the people are. Alright, so we're going to need to wire some jumper wires with our potentiometer because there's just not enough room to do everything. So do you want to take a picture now? Or? Yeah, take a picture now. Whereabouts is the camera? Uh, it was there before. Is it in here? There it is. Yeah. So hopefully I'll just get this wired up in a sec and we'll have it working just so that we can show you how something like this would in fact work.
doesn't matter about having everyone in it, oh, just as long as it has the arc sign. Okay. The arc sign is the most important thing. Okay. I think I've got this working now. So I'm gonna write a sep I'm gonna leave my circuit intact, but I'm gonna write a separate program. I've connected my buzzer to analog input one. So I'm just gonna create a new sketch and it's gonna be very, very simple. Nothing in setup. In void loop, I'm going to simply actually no, something in setup. The serial begin. And then we're going to serial print the val uh, on new line the value of analog read whatever your buzzer is connected to as per the circuit, and then uh, delay a little bit so that we can. So that we can see what's going on. All right, let's upload that program. Now it's going to be very hard to see where it's triggered, but you can use some if if and while statements to get the program working properly if you like. Okay. So, all right. So while there's no vibration, we expect the reading to be zero because it's generating no voltage. Uh, I give this thing a flick and a tap. Okay. It's very hard to see because it's printing so fast. What I'm going to do instead is I'm going to say uh, I'm going to make an int reading value and then Alright, that, that, so what I'm doing there is to make it so that I can see these values because it, it happens so fast, is that I, ha I make a reading e equal to analog read, and then if the reading is greater than zero, I'm going to print it out. So it's only going to print values that it registers, and that means that it can, you can visually see, you know, when that vibration occurs. The thing is not going to generate that much voltage without an amplifier. You could add an op operational amplifier circuit to it. Start uploading now. Okay, so what does this look like? So nothing while I'm not hitting, hitting it. And then, yeah. Good. Cool. So every time it gets a little bit of a knock, you can see the, va uh, the values it prints out. So if I flick it really hard, I get up to like a value of a hundred, but if I just tap it normally, there. So you could use that as a way of detecting any kind of vibration because it generates a very small voltage that can be detected by the analog read. So again, what that circuit looks like, uh, might have, yeah, it's it's kind of dampened on the breadboard. It's kind of just it's. needs to be amplified I think but see so again what that circuit looks like is you have your piezoelectric element uh, between ground and analog zero and then some reasonable sized resistance uh, in parallel with it so that you could measure the voltage across the resistor when it's